Good morning, everyone. This is Ron Wilkerson with Houston Professional Photography. I'm going to start a series of videos starting today. We're going to look at a number of different photos that I've taken in the past, and we're going to try to break those photos down for photographers that are in some of the forms and groups that I'm also um, members of, and hopefully these will help them understand exactly how I set up the lighting, um, my lens choices at the time, things have changed. It just really depends on, you know, when I captured that image and what equipment I was using. A lot of the older images, um, you will, you know, see that I was using Nikons back then and I was really invested in Nikons, but I have since moved over to Sony. Most of those things will still apply. It doesn't matter which camera brand you're using. And in a lot of cases, it doesn't really matter which lens you're using. You just have to take into consideration uh, the subject matter. So one of the photos that um, someone chose is from a boudoir shoot that I did uh, a couple of years ago. And if you look at this image, you can see here, you know, there are some shadowed areas along the client. She's got dark hair, somewhat dark eyes. Um, you know, there's some color here. We have this um, uh, faux fur rug and a very solid white background in the back. So the key to capturing something like this is going to be your lighting choices. So yes, we can go into Photoshop and we can edit a lot of things here. We can dodge and burn, we can liquefy, we can do a number of different things. But the key in most situations is trying your best to get your lighting right the first time. And I know when you're starting out, it's very difficult to walk up to a client or to a model that you're working with when you have no idea, you know, how to set up your lighting. Everything is new to you. Um, you're seeing so many YouTube videos talking about this modifier versus that modifier, this camera body, this lens. The key is lighting. Lighting is the key. You could literally have captured this same image with a smartphone if you could trigger these lights. So, and I mean, even Profoto now has a few lights that can be triggered by smartphones, but we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole. We're gonna start with just this image. So if you look at this image, you can kind of assume where the light's coming from by the shadowing on the body. But that's a lot to try and figure out. You know, okay, well, is the light over here to the right? Is the light to the left? Is there a light on the background? How many lights? How far is it from the background? All of those things are gonna be factors, right? So one of the reasons why I started looking into um, different type of um, software that will allow me to set up um, diagrams is because I realized early on in my career how important it was the pre-production has a lot to do with the success of your production. I cannot emphasize that enough. Planning is one of the most important things you can do before a shoot. Know exactly who you're going to be working with, what they're going to be wearing, if they're going to have their makeup professionally done, if you're working with a makeup artist, you know, making sure that makeup artist is on the same page that you're on, right? So that's the basics. So after discovering um, this software, you know, which is Satellite 3D, the version 2.5 is now available. You guys can check it out. If you uh, maybe know someone who's already used this before, they you know, probably have not upgraded yet. I don't know. But I found uh, 2.0 versions of this software that I've seen people talking about all the way back to a 1.9, I think it was. But What's really unique about this software, you know, for one, it works on Mac and PC. That's, you know, going to be an opening for a lot of people because everyone's not on a Mac, which I am. And I'm also running the uh, M1 Mac. And one of my concerns with um, the software was that, um, you know, because a lot of the optimization is not occurred yet for this uh, this silicon Mac. So a lot of the apps have to run through Rosetta. Uh, Photoshop has finally put out their final version. I'm not using it because it stops you from being able to uh, use a lot of your plugins. So I'm still using an older version of it. But this software here, I do not believe it is optimized for silicone for the M1 chip, but it works just fine. 
okay? And most apps will do the same. Most apps will work just perfectly fine on these M1 Macs. So if you've already upgraded to an M1 Mac, don't worry about it, it's there for you, right? So if you want to experiment with this software, you can um, go over to their website and you can download a free trial. The trial is for about 15 days. They are running right now a special. Uh, there's a 15% off um, ending right now, six hours and <laughs> 47 minutes. So by the time you guys see this video, the special would have probably have already ended for their spring special. But I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing more things in the future. All right, so let's get right into the, uh, to the software itself. And let me show you exactly what I've done to hopefully help you guys, um, you know, set everything up. OK, so one of the cool things I like about the software, if you are, you know, for instance, a photographer that does not have your own studio and you're leasing studio space, maybe you're at this studio one week and, you know, a different studio a couple of weeks later, it really depends. So one of the cool things that I like about this software is that you're able to go in and set up presets where you can determine if, you know, the size of a room. So let's say if it's going to be a large studio, you could choose that. If you have, um, uh, you know, different lights that are going to be available to you in the studio, you can use those. So what I've done here is I've set up one of the shoots uh, that I had done in the past. So let's go here and open. We're going to open one of my projects. And I have it just listed here as Boudoir 4. And you could have opened that from the initial startup, right? So if you look here, I'm going to zoom out and I'm gonna show you what the scene looks like, right? So if you look at the scene, you can kind of get an idea of how the lighting was set up for the room, right? So what I have here is four lights. I have uh, my main light, which was off to the left of the model. I have a fill light that is here coming in from the right of the model. And then I have two lights on the background that I'm using for, um, you know, for the background itself. So that way we have light that is, you know, falling onto the background as well as, and that's even. So I have, you know, the same power light going from this light here as well as this strobe here, and they're both hitting the background behind the model. Then, you know, we obviously had the little um, uh, chase lounge that we use uh, as well. You know, sometimes you got to really take that stuff into consideration when you're looking at um, your lighting, you know, the color of the, um, props that you're going to be using. All of those things can be a factor. So if you look here, like I said, what's cool about the software is that you can take your camera, you can, let's say for instance, we look at this camera as an example, right? So if right now it's in landscape. I can switch that to portrait by just clicking here, and that will give me a portrait view here in the viewer. You can even switch this over where the viewer becomes more dominant on your screen, which allows you to have your workspace over to the right of your screen. I prefer it the other way. So we can, let's close the props. So we can look here at the different settings. And I want you guys to know before we go too far with this, I am very, very new to this software, so I'm still learning it like a lot of you will be in the future. I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier for you to get a, a grasp on it and get started. But what's cool about this, the, the most important thing that I gather from this is it allows someone to do the pre-work and determine how you want your lights to set up. Say for instance, so we're gonna look at this fill light, right? So here's my fill light. I'm gonna turn the fill light off, and as you see instantly, you see a representation of what, that, what happened there, right? So I'm gonna turn the light back on. Now let's say I'm gonna raise the power of the light. You see that increase. You can lower the power of any of these lights. So if you go back over to this light, you can do the same. You can increase the power, you can decrease the power, just depending. Uh, if you tap at the bottom of any of the lights, you can move them around. You can adjust them however you need to. And you'll start to see the difference. I'm going to switch this camera here back to landscape. And you'll start to see the difference of um, how the light is falling on the model. You can zoom in with your camera depending on you know, which lens you've selected. So I'm emulating exactly what was done in the previous shot. So I was shooting with the Nikon at the time. I had a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I was at uh, 1 25th of a second. 
F7.1 and I was at ISO uh, 200. So we can go back to capture one and we can see the exact same thing. ISO 200, 1 25th of a second, 7.1, okay? So th the point I'm driving home, trying to drive home here is that this allows you to pre-set up your sets so that you know exactly what you're going to need on the day of the shoot, how many lights to achieve a specific um, scenario. And as I said in the previous video, what you want to be able to do, uh, let's go ahead and render this. So it takes a few minutes. It depends, again, like I said, on the, the speed of your computer as to how fast these things will render. But for the most part, it renders relatively quick. Um, I will go back before we um, you know, end this video and show you a couple little tips on how to move your models around. But let's go to the S export uh, side of things, right? So here is, this is my background light. This is my other background light. And let's say this is gonna be our main light. This is our fill light. And here is our camera, okay? So now I could send this off, I could save this and send this off to a model, a makeup artist, anyone that is going to be working with me on the day of the shoot and give them an exact idea of what it is that I'm working on, what we're going to be doing. Now, of course, if you've done photo shoots before, you already know that on the day of the shoot, you know, you want to have just a basic setup. There's gonna be multiple variations in a specific uh, posing scenarios. The models are going to move. All of those things you also have to take into consideration. Now, the one thing that I did not touch upon, and I have to emphasize this to new photographers, do not neglect metering your light. Always use a light meter if you can. Now, if you're using continuous light, you know, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. But if you're using strobes, it is important to make sure that you're getting the ratios that you're looking for. So you're going to meter the light falling on the background. You're going to meter the, the, uh, your, your key light as it falls onto the model in relation to the camera. You're going to meter your fill light as it falls onto the model in relation to the camera and so on. So again, you have these different variations of uh, the scenes that you can set up, that you can show you know, to any one of your uh, assistants, makeup artists, producers, if this is going to be a fashion shoot or a production shoot you know, for print or something like that, okay, this is perfect. And you can send this out to them as a PDF or you can do it as just a simple JPEG. You, know, you can determine what the quality is. You can also change, um, like say here, I want to turn off that little border where it was a little white border around the edge. You see that there? So I just want it to be black and I could leave it at that. And then I can just hit export and it will ask me where I want to save it. And most likely I would save that to, you know, my desktop or something like that. So I could shoot that off to um, a client. So we're just going to say we're going to call this boudoir setup. And I would just save that. Well, I'm going to save it to another location. I'm just going to save it to photos so I can find it relatively easy. And then we can lower this and this. Then if I go into my finder and I should relative, there we go. So that's what we're looking at. And that's exactly what the model, the client, Clients necessarily don't need to see this. This is going to be something that's going to be more akin to what your uh, assistants are going to need or the makeup artist is going to need or, or something like that. It just depends on what it is you're shooting. So again, I wanted to show you guys again uh, a simple layout as to how I, my mind works when I'm, when I'm preparing for a shoot. Now, I did say I wanted to show you guys something related to the models, and this is, was a problem for me starting out. I could not figure out how to uh, position the model uh, where I could move her up and down onto the surface where it looked realistic, as you see here in the, in the viewfinder. So once you select the model, and you can then now just click on it, and you can raise her up and down. I'm just going to set her there. Oops, she's sinking into the couch. So there she is. So now if we wanted to rotate her, we could do that. I mean, I don't know why you would rotate her on this couch, but you kind of get the point. 
So if we wanted to give her face a little bit more light, we could do that. Then we could reposition her by, you know, moving her around a little bit more. So all of the, the, um, the features are there. So for instance, with this model, let's say we chose our model and we wanted to go with a different laying pose. We could go into the app and then choose a different pose. Then of course we would have to, you know, reposition our model. We don't want her to sink in. There we go, we're just gonna put her there. Or let's say it's a different laying pose, like we said before. We're gonna raise her up. And I'm gonna get her to just sit right there on there. Okay, boom. So now once you zoom back out, everything looks pretty natural, you know. So I think it works. I think this is a worthwhile investment, guys. You know, and especially a lot of you who are staying home right now that are not working, um, you know, on a regular basis in studio, this is a perfect tool to get in there and start working with um, different, you know, lighting scenarios, different ideas. Now, one of the cool things, you know, before I bring this video to an end that I want to touch upon is that they have this community here where you can go in, and I think I mentioned this before, and you can look at you know submissions from other photographers, and you can click on these, you can go into them, you can um, download the set, and then you'll be able to go in and basically emulate exactly what you're seeing here, what another photographer has done you know, to achieve a specific shot. Now, this is a paid feature, like right now, this is, you know, a trial version. So if I click on this, it's going to tell me that I need to, you know, have the paid version. But once you purchase the app, um, you'll be able to go in as well as you'll be able to export your own um, scenes so that other people can then learn from those scenes. So I think that's a powerful tool to be able to go in and just look at what other photographers have done you know, depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve, you see the different lighting angles. Now, of course, this is gonna change based on the studio where you're located, but it gives you a starting point. You know, you can see here what camera was used, how far the camera for this shot was from the model. You know, the uh, um, different lighting that they're using, the background they're using in this specific shot, and the end result. So, again, it's a, t it's a teaching tool, it's a learning tool, I think that for most photographers, whether you are a working professional or an amateur just starting out, or uh, we're going to say an aspiring photographer starting out, this is going to be a powerful tool for you. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to be doing over the next uh, few days, weeks, however it goes, I will be doing more how I got the shot videos so that I can walk you guys through, um, like I said, how my mind works when it comes to um, a lot of this stuff. And I think once you start to visualize lighting and how the light falls on the model, on the subject, this could also work for product photography. Any number of different things you could use this same software for. So if this, you know, you say if this was a product, you know, shot and you were setting up a scenario, you can build it out because there's a ton of props within this app that allows you to go in and create things. You know, so if you go back to the set and we go back to our props really quick here, there are a few, you know, so you have, you know, cameras, you have um, backdrops, you have, you know, furniture, you have accessories. So if you go into accessories, you got plants, you got, um, you know, um, apple boxes, ladders, purses, <laughs> golf clubs. I don't know why. Okay. But then you got drapes, things like that. You know, you have food items. So you could, you know, practice your food photography if that's something that you're into. Uh, if we go to some of the basic stuff, you know, you got different shapes. And what else we have here? Furniture. So if you're doing, you know, again, you know, portrait photography or something like that, or environmental photography, and you know, you want to put someone behind a desk and you want to see how that lighting setup would need to be, you know, structured in order to get that shot. If you're doing boudoir, obviously, you know, you can bring in one of these beds that you could use, something like that. And like I said, you're only limited by your imagination as far as it goes. So anyway, guys, I don't want this video to be ridiculously long because I want to plan more um, targeted videos in the future. So uh, I'm going to bring this video to an end. 
This has been your boy Rome with Houston Professional Photography. Hopefully, um, something in this video, you know, has sparked your inspiration and you're saying, hey, I know I could benefit from this. Yes, download it, get the 30-day trial, play with it, watch a few videos. There's a number of tutorials on their site walking you through this step-by-step -step as to, you know, how to get the best results from it. You know, follow your boy on Instagram. I'm out there. You know, I'm just, you know, eh, I really have been doing a lot on Instagram, but I really want to start getting my Instagram numbers up. I am posting also some videos on Instagram as well as, you know, some behind the scenes stuff, little snippets, maybe some things that you won't see on YouTube because the videos are so short, but it still will be packed with information that could benefit you. So follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at Houston Professional Photography, and I will see you guys there. You can also send me messages which I will most likely respond to so ah, let's bring this video to an end all right guys you have a great day stay safe wash your hands stay creative peace I'll catch you in the next video